Hey, um, I know it's really dark in here. Um, hang on, let me see if I can. There, that's a little better. Yeah, I didn't show y'all. I don't know. I'll show you in the daytime too, but I got this really cool shirt on my travels. It's nice. Um, kind of replaced the, the tie-dye one that uh, my best friend lost on me. But yeah, I'm sitting here about to go to sleep. And I'm all alone, mind you. And I really don't care for this spot just because of the fact that the service was spotty enough in the last place. And this place, there's no service. So I'm going to have to wait to upload these anyways. But I just wanted to, like, oh my gosh. Like, I was sitting here editing that last video and I hear coyotes. Two of them. And they were really, really close to the camper so yeah tomorrow i'm definitely going to either go back to the spot that i was at because i think because it was so high at a really good service um or check out that other spot that i showed you all but yeah uh even though i can't upload these right now it still makes me feel better just talking to y'all because i'm kind of scared right now. I'm definitely nature girl, but I also have a great respect for things that can kill me. And it was either a coyote or it was a wolf, which it could definitely be a wolf out here. So yeah, um, I just wanted to share that with y'all. Sorry it's so dark. Uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Wish me luck. I'm scared. <laughs> These are the times that I wish I had a travel buddy. It wouldn't be as scary. So, yeah. I am about to shut the lights off and be in complete darkness with coyotes everywhere. So, uh, wish me luck and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow. Peace out. It's day two. I survived the night, even though there were coyotes and stuff. Um, so I've got my solar panel out, and I'm going to attempt now to hook up the solar panel, which that I know I can do, but I'm going to see if I can actually have my um, attachment that has the two clips for the positive and negative and the, um, you know, the cigarette DC outlet thing in it. I'm going to see if I can have that running at the same time, um, because for some reason when I plug in to my charge controller for the load, if I charge, like if I was trying to run the fan for instance, it ran it backwards. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with that, and I know I had them plugged in right, um, on the right cables. So I'm going to try and do that at the same time, that way at the same time I can plug in this awesome um, four post, sorry, four post, I'm still working on my coffee four post DC outlet um like charger that I got at Walmart for twenty dollars. So it's got two in it <clears throat> when you plug it in and then it's got a long cord so you can run it back to the back seat if you're in a car or a van or whatever. Really long cord. But anyways it's, it's a charging hub on the second cord which has two plugs also. So it works really really well in here but like I said before I don't want to run it off my car battery. So I'm going to see if I can do that at the same time that I'm charging my regular battery because I always run my fan at night. So I want to try and get some charge in while I still got sunshine. Um, and then I'm going to take a walk. After I make my coffee I'm getting out my Coleman stove and getting that all set up and then I'll let you guys know how it goes. See you soon. Wish me luck. Doing it the way I explained to you and I almost thought for a second that it shorted out my new uh, four uh, thing. So I made sure that works. It's still working, so I'm good. Uh, I'll give you a little look see on what I did here and how I have it hooked up. Hold on, flip you around. I do have this little inverter that I got a long time ago. It's a 1,000 watt powered inverter. So basically what I did was I hooked up the um, charge controller first, right there. Hooked that up to the battery. Well, the battery was first, and then I hooked the charge controller up to that, because you're always supposed to hook the battery up first. And from Camp Goer 1 and a couple other people, Dan, I believe, thank you so much for telling me, red first, black second, and then back off black, that was from Camp Goer 1 too. Thank you so much. And basically, I just hooked up the inverter to my other attachment, my DC outlet attachment. 
and then I hooked that up to the battery correctly and then I plugged in my charger my backup charger and it is charging it's actually charging pretty fast too it was at like 28 just five minutes ago and it never charges that fast so yeah I am going to I've got two other chargers that I need to fully charge so I'm gonna do that while the sun is shining while it's charging my battery as well so yeah that's how I've got it hooked up and then the cord out here you can see is going through the door there's like a little notch in the door where it goes through perfectly without harming the cord and then I got my solar panel sitting out there nice and sunny yeah so that is the hookup I need two hands to do this so give me one second alright so I've figured out my power issue just to give you another look that is the solar cable always plug in your like put the, the clamps on your battery first positive then negative when you take them off take negative first back off black and then positive so you can do this little setup that I was wondering which I thought was cool because I know before I've seen them on these little wing nuts so and that is the only inverter I have in-house the other one is actually attached to the box inside so yeah it's just this little thousand watt inverter it's charging really really good you can hear it running yeah and I've got all the windows open so I've got plenty of air filtering through plenty of ventilation um, so yeah I'm just gonna charge these up I have figured out my power needs yay <laughs> I think I need a new charge controller for sure because that one's the cheapest that you can get but I got it when I had my car and I only needed that 25 watt panel that's all I could fit in my car so yeah so that's why I have such a small convert or charge controller. But yeah, that was a Harbor Freight find. If you haven't seen my older videos from when I first bought it, it it's been working really good. I've had it over a year. Um, that little inverter right there, I've had for years, probably at least 10 years. I got it so I could use my laptop in the car and go find Wi-Fi. So yeah, and this is just a $10 backup charger from Walmart. Um, that other Schwimm, uh, show you the other it's kind of messy in here right now but that one is supposed to be able to jump start your car I think I got a dud to be honest because it never actually worked right and then thank you Chris for this other one which is down to 14% I've got this one which is going to be down to nothing if I don't I didn't notice the flashlight was on but yeah it's got an LED flashlight on it but it's also a backup charger and I have a black one hanging around here somewhere and then that's the new piece that's the that's the extension the hub for the back and you can clip it on it comes with a little clip that you can also take off if you want to like stick it on permanently it comes with a little double-sided tape and then the other one and it's fast charging too because I was having a really big problem getting anything to charge in this thing because it's so old but yeah so it's got two of those I'm trying to see if I can get it to focus hold on focus focus <laughs> don't mind me all right anyways it's basically 2.4 amps and that one goes into your cigarette lighter and then the hub can go wherever you want it's got really long cord which is kind of annoying but good at the same time and then that plugged in is my um, battery maintainer that I got also in Arizona when I had my car because I kept getting a dead battery so now I've come into the habit that every time I stop I plug that in and I've never had a problem starting this up after it sat for over a month at Chris's when we were on the road and it still had juice so yeah hold on I'll flip you on I'm getting by I'm going to put my eyeballs in get these things off my face because um, they're highly annoying and let that charge while I make some more coffee on my Coleman stove uh, it's just a little camp stove it's fine once I get the coffee done and my eyeballs in and brush my teeth then I'm gonna go take a walk because I looked on Google last night Google Maps and the satellite view showed me that road that I showed you that way that I didn't think I could get the RV into and there's a nice little camp spot down there but there is a questionable spot where I'm not sure if it like dips down or is underwater or what I couldn't really tell from there so that's why I'm gonna take a walk 
and check it out. And hopefully I don't run into any bears because all I could think about last night was this movie, um, Backcountry. Don't ever watch it unless you never want to go outside again because it'll make you never want to go camping again. All I could think about was his face getting ripped off. It was, it was really traumatizing. Still traumatizes me to this day. Do not walk, watch Backcountry if you like going camping. Um, I don't know if there's any bears out here. Like I said, I am in West Texas. So I'm between Dallas and, um, Dallas and El Paso. So yeah, not sure there's any bears. I'd look it up, but I don't have very good service. Like I said, it goes in and out. And when it does come in, it's very weak here, especially here. So another reason why I kind of want to move to a different campsite and I'm going to check the service as I go. I forgot to do that last time because I was busy videoing and I didn't think of it. So yeah, I'm going to go do that and I'll get back to you. See you soon. I know this is kind of out of left field and kind of out of nowhere, but I was trying to pick up some stuff and to make it more livable in here. Uh, I still got a lot of organizing to do, but basically I was going to throw this out and then I figured I'd put this up there. For any of you wondering what I want to travel out of, this is a great example anything like this that is no more than two thousand dollars I can't afford more than two thousand but that's what I want right there it's a van but it's got everything in it that an RV has that is what I want I found this in New York so I know it was like way out of my price range I don't see the paper that had the actual price on it but yeah this is what I'm looking for this is what I actually want more than anything in the world, I want this. So I just thought I'd show you guys so that, you know, if you see something along the way or you hear about something, just uh, if it's anything like this, it must have a high top because I have to be able to stand up in it. But I really don't want an RV. I really don't. I would rather have one of these more than anything else in the world. So yeah, if you come across one of those, Please let me know, because <laughs> I would, I would really love one of those. I definitely can't afford more than two thousand though, so that's the problem. I'm, I can't afford more than that. It took me three months to save up the thousand for this, um, because of what I make off disability, which is practically nothing. I mean, I got six hundred dollars to live off of for the whole month, so it's really hard to save any money. Or maybe somebody will be interested in trading, you know? I'll trade them this for one of these. <laughs> in a heartbeat, I would. So if you know anybody looking to upgrade to an RV, this is a great RV, but I just don't want an RV. I'm happy with a van as long as I can stand up in it. And this is what I want right there. So if you find anybody willing to trade or sell it for cheap, 2000 or under, just please let me know. Thanks, guys. See you later. So contacts are in. Uh, I went out to brush my teeth and wash my hands to do that and realized that I did not notice something that's very important. And I'm going to flip you guys around and show you something. A little tip. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Hold on. I'll show you what I mean. What I'm videoing, but this is where my door is. And I almost walked right into this. Do you see that? That mound of dark right there? I hope you can see it. I'm not going to get very close. I'm trying to watch where I'm walking because that mound you see right there is a fire ant mound. Do you see them all? Now, I'm going to zoom in for you. I'm not going to get any closer. I'm hoping I'm getting this. There we go. I can see it kind of. See those? Those are fire ants. Now look at how close. And I'm trying to watch where I step because there are fire ants everywhere. They're going all along there and past my RV right there. Like they're right at my doorstep. This is way too close to be to a fire ant mound. You can see them on the ground. If you look, see? And they're everywhere. See that little sucker? They're everywhere. You can see them. They're going all along here. I don't know what they're going back and forth from. But they seem to be 
like trailing this way going back to the mound and then coming back this way and there's some even over by my doorstep right there you can see them by the solar panel they're right here they're everywhere so I think before I go for a walk I am going to move farther away from this fire ant mound because they're just all over right here I'm gonna walk over here a little and see if I can either find out where they're going to and from and if there's another mound over here or not and I'll get back to you cool grasshopper right there oh there it goes flew away so yeah this side looks fine there's no fire ants on this side at least not one that I've seen so I think I'm gonna pull her up a little bit just right up here so I'm a little further away from that ant pile because right now there's fire ants going all over my RV so I'm gonna pull it up here probably up to the side here probably it's about right here is good and then I'll take my walk and go from there yeah yeah I'm gonna do that all right I'll get back to you guys